Well, then in prayer request, just we have some prayer. Amen. And my prayer request is that the Lord will just continue to bless the church and the church family, that the Lord will add to the church as he sees fit. Asking a special prayer for my cousin Jesse and New York, as the doctors have said, they've done all that they can do, but we know that God has the final say in everything that God will touch his heart, his mind, his body, and his soul, and that the Lord will just have his way in his life. Um, just asking that the Lord will continue to bless the body of believers at large, that he'll continue to strengthen our spiritual leaders and his people. Amen. Amen. that you pray for Robert Williams. Amen. He's supposed to have a procedure done on Wednesday. Amen. And they're not giving him a good recommendation. Amen. But we know that God can do anything but fail. So we ask him to pray for him that as he go in on Wednesday that God will give him a special touch. Also, we ask you to pray for the saints everywhere. Amen. That they will stand in holy places. Amen. And we ask them to continue prayer for this household of faith. Amen. Because God said he was going to tear it down to the bare walls. And then he was going to bring, bring it back up. Amen. And we're looking for them to come from the north, east, south, and the west. Amen. We're looking for that influence. For God to bless the church. Also, ask a prayer for my siblings, amen, for my children, amen, and my nieces and nephews, just for my family, amen, and a special prayer, amen, of thanks, amen, that God took Ella Johnson through the surgery and brought him out safely, amen, that he's here with us today. Also, I'm asking you, amen, to pray for my grandchildren, amen, my Amen, my granddaughter, Ashanti, pray for her, that God will continue to bless her, amen, as she go about, amen, trying to attain certain things in life. Also, we thank God, amen, I, I miss Cuba name her, so I better say Cuba. <laughs> amen, and so let's pray for my other granddaughter. Amen. That God will keep her and help her to attain the things that she set out to attain in life. But most of all, help them to remember Him and the way that they were brought up, and bring them back into the uh, into holiness. Amen. Just pray for all my grandchildren that God will keep them. Amen. Amen. And let them know who their heritage of is among the saints of God. Those are my prayer requests. Anybody else? Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the name of Jesus. Lord, we come to you this morning. I tell you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for how you lead us down last night. How you woke us up this morning and went to see the Lord that we have never seen before. And Lord, when it's gone, we'll never be able to cap it back. We ask you to have mercy this morning. Yes, Lord. Search out our heart. If you find anything that's not like you, we ask you to move it up. In the name of Jesus, elevate our minds and take it out of Lord. And forgive us for our transgressions. In the name of Jesus, bind Satan on every hand. Oh God. Loose the bound and set the captain. Pull out every strong. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, we ask you to look on the in church. The name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless it in a special way. Oh God. Oh God. Lord, keep it from untruth and disbelief. Yes. Yes. Uphold it always in the hand of love and protection. In the name of Jesus. Lord, and give it a vision that will reach out to mankind here and there. Yes, Lord. Lord, save somebody. In the, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So they're standing on a street corner this morning. Oh, God. Lord, we ask you to look on them. Let them know that they are loved. Touch their hearts and minds. Yes. Lord, let them know to come to the house of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. South Bay. Bell oh, Bay. God. Oh, God. In oh, the God. name of Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yes. God, we ask you to look on the angel that you have. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Elevate the mind. Yes. Keep it with a vision. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, God, don't forget about me. Oh, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Yes. Down in Missouri, we yes. hold the tree this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I give us a high time in this service. Yes. We will forever give thee all honor and praise. Yes. These and other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Time, time, time. Time is wild enough.
Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 11. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. When you have it, say amen. We have everyone to stand. To rep the reading of God, holy word, and you'll find these words written. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Amen. I read for you, amen. Second Chronicles, the seventh, seventh chapter, verses 11 through 14. May the Lord add a special blessing to the readers, the hearers, and those that apply his holy word in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. <coughs> The chimes of time ring out the news, another day is through. Someone slipped and fell, was that someone you? You may have asked for had a strip, your courage to renew. Don't be discouraged, for I bring hope to you. It is
worship again this morning. Amen. Thank God for the saints. Amen. And for all the people of God. Amen. I just praise God for being here today for his goodness. Amen. And how he's kept us together. The circle has not been broken. Amen. And I truly thank God for that. Amen. Because we have learned here that you pray one for the other. Amen. If one doing good, we all doing good. Amen. If one in need, everybody go to the rescue. Amen. And in doing that, amen, we come out more than winners. Amen. And I just thank God my head. He's kept me with a mind to live right in these last and evil days. Amen. And the most of all, I thank God, amen, that I know him. Amen. It's my Savior. Amen. I know him. Amen. Amen. I just trust God for everything. Amen. And right here we're going to open up to your glorious testimony service that you can testify your life to God. Amen. Sing your song. Amen. Testimony of service is open. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you.
Lord, I just want to thank you. That is my testimony on today. Because he has been my food when I was hungry. He's been the shelter in the time of the storm. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, what I'm dealing, he's always there with me. And I just thank him for being so good to me because I can't even begin to name all the things that he's been to me and how good he has been to me down through the years and brought me to this present day and present time. He's just an awesome, amazing God. Amen. And just giving him praise, honor, and glory this morning. Amen. Amen. church in the Bureau, a 17 year old one out of the West, going home from the service by 3 o'clock in the morning, he came into my life. And I thank him for that. I want to thank God for my wife. 
Amen. Amen. My son did that. Uh, they were so faithful in the hospital. Seeing about me, being there with me, Father. I thank God for all those that was praying for me. I never had a doubt in my mind that I wasn't going to make it. But I never had a doubt in my mind when I went to the hospital on Tuesday morning that I wasn't coming back home because I had no idea that my heart was in the shape that it was in. Because I've had those headaches, dizzy spells, feelings, and blackout space. I had no idea what it was. But the Lord just had it so that I had one one morning to my wife and I said, baby, you need to take me to the emergency room. Went to the emergency room. God works behind the scene to fulfill his own purpose. When they called my name to come up, to go to be interviewed, I got up not feeling no way faint or not feeling no way ill at all. And when I got up before I got to the desk, if it had not been for a man behind me, I would have fell and passed out. And by that, there was a lady that was on the staff asked me how long had the faint spell been happening. And I told her it's about a year. She said, that's too long. So when I went to the emergency room, they did what they had to do, and they sent me home. But she had sent my record to another doctor. I went to see that doctor. And I went in and sat down and was telling her how I was feeling. And she said, Mr. Johnson, I'm going to give you a heart monitor to wear for 24 hours. Put it on Monday and you come back on Tuesday and we'll take it off. When I went back Tuesday, no intention of staying at the hospital. And many spaces on that piece of program paper that my heart had paused for many times. One time as long as 9.9 seconds. And it was only God that kept me alive. Because at any one of those times, I could have went out. And not came in, my heart could have stopped completely. And I not come back. But I thank God. And one thing I'll find out, you can pretend all you want, but you better be living right. You better be living like the Bible says. I don't care what you say from your lips. But if you're not living like the Bible says, you won't be ready when death comes. And I'm so glad that I have a praying wife. And I pray daily, 24 hours a day. I'm before praying and studying the scripture. And I'm so glad that I have found out God righteous way of living. And everything we do, we got to do it for the glory of God. Because he's coming back. And time is winding up. I thank God again for each and every one of you. Pray for me that I'll forever stay meek and humble. God can use me each and every day or everywhere I go. Pray my strength in the Lord. Be ready when he comes. Oh, be ready when he comes. Be ready when he comes. Oh, he's coming. Get your work undone. Oh.
Oh, my God. 
Amen. And sing your song if you want it to sing. Amen. And we're just grateful to be here today. Amen. Amen. We, we thank God because God is God. Amen. Amen. No matter what we go through, He goes through it with us. Amen. And we are so grateful to be here and, and thanking God for all the things that He has taken us through. Thank you, Lord. I look around and I said, Where did this year go? If y'all don't know it, we almost in the middle of November. The year is almost gone. Amen. I don't know about you, but I said, Lord, where did the time go? Amen. But when you live it and tend to your business, tend to God's business, you'll see the time will fly right on back. Amen. And what he has for you, guess what? It's for you. I don't care what the people do, how they do it. What God has for you, it is for you. Amen. Amen. And God is yet blessed. Amen. It's been been a kind of trying year, but I think it's you no know, God has kept it. Amen. God has kept it. Amen. Uh, I think just about every family in here has sickness has visited their house. But the circle hasn't been broken. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. Sometimes it will be sickness here and there, one couldn't help the other. Amen. But we know how to pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God to be there with you, going through yours. Because I was going through also. But guess what? God lifted us both up. Amen. And that's the way God works. Amen. We're so glad to be here today. And Amen. Uh, today is Second Sunday. Amen. Our presiding young Bates is going to bring the word, break the bread of life this morning. Amen. Amen. And let, uh, let's be ready. Amen. Amen. And let's Amen. sit at your plates, yes. your sauces, your cups. Amen. Even put that dessert plate on that there. Amen. I hope you got all of you utensils ready. Yes. Amen. And we know that whatever God gives him, he's going to give it to us. Don't go ahead of it. Don't come back. Let's go together. Give him your heart and amen. Amen. That he can take us to the throne of grace. I introduced the song. Everybody standing. I introduced the song and sent to others, none other than our own presiding elder. Minister, amen. Deacon, keep it all of them. Amen. I bring him to your front. Let us say, man. The shepherd of this house, the chief apostle, found and overseer of the Springfield Churches of Christ, written in heaven, Apostle Paul E. Johnson, amen. To our very own <laughs> Elder Johnson, amen. To Elder Bridges in her absence, amen, to my very beautiful and supportive wife, Minister Bates, amen, to Deacon Lovett, Senior and Junior, amen, and to our, uh, I would say my daughter and the mother, and the little God, what I call her, Cutie, amen, being here with us, and last but not least, Brother Fred Burgess the third, amen. We thank God, amen, from the book of Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verses 11 through 14. And how many of you know that as a preacher, amen, when God gives you a word, amen, the word comes to the preacher first. 
that being said, that the preacher need to line up with the word first. Amen. Before we can encourage or instruct anyone else to line up with the word. R&B single, Barry White, I call him Big Heaven. One of his songs says to practice for what you preach. From the book of 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse, you'll find these words written. Thus Solomon finished Yes. At the king's house. Yes. And all that came at the Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his own house he prosperously protected. Yes. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have Amen. If I shut up the heaven, let there be no way. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. If I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I Amen. We thank you, Pastor. We thank God for the reading of his word. Amen. We heard the songs today tell us that time is winding up. Another song tells us to be ready when he comes. Jesus is soon to come at a time in the point out that no man North, the Bible tells me that he will come as a thief in the night. We must be prepared and ready to go back with him when he comes. At the time of the writing of these words, <coughs> Solomon had just finished building Amen, the house of the Lord and his house. Now, in this particular passage of scripture, the Lord makes a promise to Solomon. And to give you a little insight as to what was going on while the temple was being built, Amen. The people had turned away from God. They had sinned, and now God has called the people to confess their sin and turn back to God Amen. with their heart to pray to worship, and to serve them for help. Amen. And you can find that in the 6th chapter and the 38th verse. We know the history of the children of Israel. Amen. How they were taken into captivity. How they were punished and mistreated and used and, and abused. Amen. And yet through it all, God was yet still with them. Amen. And God sent, amen, a messenger to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh to let my people go. Amen. Pharaoh, being stout hearted, amen, did not want to heed to the word of God. 
And because of the darkness of his heart, the refusal to accept God's word, amen, it brought pestilence and disease upon the land. Amen. And Pharaoh still being stubborn and stuck on himself and his God. Amen. That God sent his messenger once again to Pharaoh to tell him to let my people go. Amen. And Pharaoh being Pharaoh and I can do what I want to do and I have authority and power to just speak certain things. Amen. And there are people that will put their life on the line to see to it that it get carried out. He even out of his own mouth spoke the death of his own son. Amen. And God delivered the people out of the hand of Pharaoh. Amen. Pharaoh finally said, felt like he had enough. Amen. But listening to the woman that was buzzing in his ear. Amen. After he let the people go, he in the midst of letting Israel go, amen. He made them millionaires. Amen. He told them to get all the vessels they can get and borrow all that they can get. Amen. And he made way for them out of the land. And Pharaoh, listening, amen, he gathered together all his chariots and his horsemen and his armies, and amen, and put himself in a high speed pursuit of the children of Israel. Amen. And then the children of Israel looking back and seeing Pharaoh bearing down on them. Amen. Gets to the sea. Amen. Nowhere to go. Pharaoh to their bike. Amen. Water in front of them. Amen. But God instructed Moses to just lift his hands. Amen. And he parted the sea. Amen. And he delivered the children of Israel. Pharaoh run down, send his army. Now let me tell you something about the devil, amen. He will send his imps and his nymphs and his demons, amen, but he going to stay back, amen. Pharaoh stayed up high so he could look down and watch what he thought was going to happen, amen. The army went down into the sea, amen, and Moses come up on the other side, amen, and out stretch his hands to God, amen. And down comes the water of the sea and destroys the enemy of the children of Israel. God delivered them out of bondage. Yes. God delivered them out of what they presumed to be imminent death. Amen. God yet still blessed them in the midst of it. Yes. Amen. And now we're here. Amen. Once again, amen, with the children of Israel being stout hearted, you would think after a 40 year journey, a journey that should have taken 40 days, amen, in the midst of the journey, the feet didn't swell, amen. The food that they was in so much of a need of, God provided it day by day, amen, and had it in abundance, amen. They didn't have to worry about where it was coming from. They didn't have to worry about will it come, amen. If God says he's going to do it, amen, he's going to do it, amen. He's a good God, an awesome God, and there's no other God like him, amen. My Bible tells me Solomon had thus finished building the house of the Lord and the king's house. And all that was in his heart to do. Amen. Verse 12 says, And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night. And some of you have that night to this. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we caught up and so busy during the day. God is trying to get our attention. God is trying to talk to us. But because we're so busy and caught up, we are not hearing or seeing what God is trying to say to us. But he 
said unto him, I have heard your prayer. Amen. It might not seem like God is hearing our prayer. We are praying, but it don't seem like that prayer is being answered. But if you serve the same God that I serve, amen, you pray and keep right on praying. Amen. Because God hears the prayer of his people. Amen. And I have chosen this place for my house, for a house of sacrifice. Amen. It's something when God chooses his house. Amen. Amen. And, and I have chosen this place for a house of sacrifice. Amen. We don't want to give up nothing, but we want everything God got. We want all the blessings, but we don't want to bless up. Amen. But Solomon said, God said, if I shut up the heaven, that there be no more rain. If I command the locusts to devour land, or if I send pestilence among my people. See, this was a time of the children of Israel being disobedient. Amen. Judgment, God's <coughs> judgment, have come upon the people. Amen. We serve a God that loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. But this is the same God that loves us enough to chastise us when we are away. Amen. Amen. And during this time, God said that if my people, which are called by my name, he didn't say any people. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, that tells me that he's talking to the saints. That tell me that he's talking to the same people. Amen. That tell me that he's talking to those that name the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. If they shall humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, not Buddha, not Elijah Muhammad, not Sun Young Moon, Amen. but they will seek my faith. My faith. Amen. And turn from their wicked ways. Yeah. If is a condition, a requirement yeah. of tribulation. Yeah. Now, if the disobedient children of Israel, if the disobedient ones that are now finding themselves up under the judgment of God, amen, if they shall humble themselves. God's people, we must recognize our faith. Amen. We must recognize that it's God and not us. We must recognize that we can do nothing without God. To God be the glory in everything that we do. If we were to put God first, amen, in everything, we working on something now. Amen. Now, if I humble myself, the word says, then I must pray. I got to talk to God. I have to communicate with God. I have to seek God's guidance and direction. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to go. I don't know what you are doing, but I know you are doing something. What is it? And seek my faith. Seek my faith. We have more people that's worshiping the creation more than the creator. God is a jealous God. And say to God, there is no other God like the truth and living God that we serve and worship. Now, if we meet all these conditions, 
their one for me. They turn from their wicked ways. Wicked is an evil or moral, morally bad in principle or practice. If you want to go back with God, you have to change your ways. <coughs> Drug dealers got to stop selling drugs. Homemongers got to stop homemongers. Liars got to stop lying. Sexually impure people got to stop being a sexually impure practice. Amen. The prostitute got to stop prostituting. The deceiver got to stop deceiving. Amen. Turn from your wicked ways. That being said, before we proceed any further, if I was to put a topic to this message, it would be, it's time to fall in line with God's word. Amen. It's time to fall in line with God's word. This is a manuscript, the Holy Bible is a manuscript for right, righteous living. Amen. It's the road map that's going to get us from earth to glory. Amen. If, the scripture says, if, there's a condition. If we were to turn from our wicked ways, whatever is against God is considered wicked. Amen. Let me tell you something. I forgive, but I don't forget. It's wickedness. Amen. It's sin. And it will keep you out of heaven. If you say you love me, show me you love me. If you whip me, don't let me have to hunt you down when I need you. Amen. What's love got to do with it? If you love God, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Time is winding up, saints. It's time to fall in line with God's word. Amen. It's time to stop playing church and be the church. It's time to stop playing holy and be holy. Amen. It's time to stop shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Amen. And worship God in spirit and in truth. In everything that we do. Amen. The way we walk, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we dress, the way we eat, what we drink. Everything about us must line up with the word of God if we intend to go back with him. Time is winding up, church. Well, pastor, preacher, what you're talking about, it's time to fall in line. Well, it's time to conform to God's word. The word tells us be not conformed to the things of this world. And we know this world is in wicked and severe wicked degradation. It is rotting, getting worse and worse day by day by day by day. 26 was shot and killed in the church house. Amen. In Texas, amen. The church has come under a type. Amen. Week after week, it seemed like. Men going into the church and taking on the church folk, gunning people down, amen. There was a time when a man refused to go to the church and do anything wrong, but it seemed like now the church house is the place to go to make a wicked statement. But let me tell you something. When you come against God, you are fighting a losing battle. He's a God that can knock out the biggest giant. He's a God that has more power, strength, and muscle than any military, any armory, or uh, any bomb, or anything else man-made. God cannot only destroy the building. He cannot only destroy man, amen, but he's a God that can destroy the body and the soul, amen. Man can't touch the soul, but God can destroy them both. Amen. It's time to plumb the line. 
as Bishop Ingram would say, it's time to call me back. Step up a standard or pull your banner down. Amen. Right now is the right time, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but today. The day you hear my voice, harder not your heart. Now, I'm not me talking, that's the word of God talking. It's time to hear what God says the Lord and come into conformity with God's word. Be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind get renewed, you walk differently, you talk differently, you act differently, you live differently, and the world will know that you are different. You don't have to tell them. Amen. They will know. Amen. Your action tell whether there's been a change or not. People are listening to what the church is saying, but most importantly, people are watching what the church is doing. They can care less about what you say, most of them. But they want to see what you do. Just because it's night, just because you're out of town, just because you're out of state, just because they have their motto that say what goes on in Vegas, stay in Vegas, I want to serve notice to you, wherever you are, somebody sees you and a record is being kept of everything that you do. God sits high, and he looks down low. He hear all, see all, and he know all. You can't get by it. It's time to fall in line with God's word. How can I fall in line with God's word? Get in the word. Study the word for yourself. Read the word for yourself. And accept what the word says. Don't try and rationalize it. Don't try and Work your way around it. Don't try and look for a loophole, but you meet it head on, and you drive according to the roadmap. If you follow Route 66, you will never go wrong. Yeah. Never go wrong. Yeah. Yesterday has passed, never to return again. And tomorrow is promised to no man. And to some, Tomorrow is not going to come. Amen. We, we see the wickedness of the world. Amen. Man can marry man. Woman can marry woman. Amen. Homosexuals are allowed to adopt children. Amen. You see mothers are killing their children. Amen. Fathers are abandoning their sons. Amen. We see, amen, the government is not for the government, amen. We see, amen, the United States is talking a crazy talk, amen. Any country, any nation that come against the nation of Israel, amen, is getting in trouble with God, amen. Don't fool with Israel, amen. Even though Israel is disobedient in this text, amen, God is yet still with them, amen. Today is a perfect day to get it right with God. How much clearer do God have to make it that if my people want the blessings that's found in this word, amen, they have to meet the condition, amen. You have to overlook the distractions, amen. You have to overlook the naysayers, amen. You have to overlook the doubting Thomases, amen. You have to even overlook the self-doubt that even come into yourself, amen, and look towards God, amen. I might not understand. I might not see. I might not feel the greatest, but Lord, I know you're there. Lord, I know you got my back. Lord, I know you're with me. Lord, you promised me, amen, that you'll never leave me nor forsake me, that you'll be with me even until the end of the world, amen. When it's dark outside, it's dark in my finances, it's dark in my marriage, it's dark in my bed, it's dark on my job, amen. I know that the sun is yet still shining. S-O-N is always shining. Jesus Christ is always shining. He's never dark. He's never dim. He's never gloom. He's never dark. He's never short. Amen, amen. And nothing we say is who he is. He's all power. But it's time for the church to fall in line 
with the word of God. Wherever and whoever you are, wherever you've gotten out of line with the word of God, it's time to come back. It's time to fall back, fall back in line while there is time. Amen. Death is lurking. Death is looming. Death is everywhere. Amen. I get it right. When I get right, then I come to church. You might die tonight. Amen. You might die before you finish that statement. Amen. You might die before you leave home. You might die before you leave this church. Amen. You may die instantly. Amen. Elder Johnson said, amen, that when he was sleeping, his heart stopped on numerous occasions. It paused on numerous occasions. At any given time, he could have been out of here. And I'm not just going to him. I'm using him because he is a living example that God has placed amongst us to show us just how good he is if we do what he said he would do. Amen. Just because the doctor say you have a heart attack. Just because the doctor say you have cancer. Amen. Just because the doctor say there is no hope. Amen. I'm here today to tell you that if you fall in line with God's word, there is hope. There is hope in God's word. There is hope. Jesus Christ is the doctor, amen. He can cure all, heal all, and he's above all that man could say. If we were to fall in line amen. with God's word, amen. every promise that God makes is for us amen. if we believe. Amen. If we trust him and we obey him, amen. we shall have the promises that God has for us. Don't doubt. Don't listen to someone else. I tried it and didn't work. Maybe there was something in your life that caused you to miss out. Let me tell you about prayer. Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is communing with God. Prayer is fellowship with God. But sin will hinder your prayer. If you've been praying and 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 praying, and what you prayed for, it had not come to pass, it's time for a reality check. It's time for self-evaluation. Lord, is it me that's causing the prayer not to be answered? If it's me, show me me. Show me the error of my ways that I can get it right and be right and right standing with you. That my words will not hit the ceiling and fall back down. Well, then it tells us that after we uh, got back into conformity, after we done lined up with the word of God, amen, after we accept what was said unto us through the word of God, amen, and we repent of our sins, Get our act together. Get it back right with God. Then the scripture tells us, then, then. We were talking about him, but now we're talking about him. There's something about then. Then, when God's four conditions for revival and restoration are met, then God's threefold promise of revival will be fulfilled. One, God will turn away his anger from his people. Yes. Listen to their desperate cry and be attentive to their prayer. Yes. If God is attentive to my prayer, that means he, I have his undivided attention. And let me tell you something. You can have a million people crying out to God at the same time and he can hear every one of them and understand them well. Then, but only then. In other words, the first evidence of revival is that God begins to hear and answer prayer from heaven and show compassion for his people. We show we, we have a compassionate God. Yes, we do. He loves us. Amen. But he don't love sin. Yes, I heard so many people say, well, 
God know my heart. Yes, he does. You are speaking a truth. He do know your heart. He know what junk is in it, and he know if the house been clean. He do know, and he gonna judge every man according to what's in your heart. Amen. Amen. Now, God wants us to be in right fellowship with him. In order for us to be in right fellowship with him, in order for him to forgive us, we have to admit that we're in error. A lot of us can't get healed because we fail to admit that uh, I practice uh, sexual immorality. I fail to acknowledge that I cheated on my wife or I, I, I drank alcohol, I did drugs. I fail to admit that I'm a sinner in need of saving. I don't care what title you hold, what position you may be holding, either in the church, on your job, in society. You can go out and witness to people every day, all day. You can lead hundreds of people to Christ and be lost yourself because of sin in your life. That little white lie can cause you to miss out all the other. This is serious business we're talking about. We're not talking about missing out on a job because we lied on an application. We're talking about making a conscious decision to line up with God's word, to admit that we're a sinner, repent, and turn from our wicked ways, turn to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, because if you don't, you will not only lose a job, you're not losing the home that you apply for, you're not losing a loan that you apply for, your soul salvation is at stake. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And there's a place that called Hades, place that called hell, place that called the lake that burned with fire, a place that called the bottom of the pit, none of that is good. It is for a people that refuse to accept God's word and live accordingly. And for those that have accepted God's word and went back on God's word, got horrid after the world again in the worldly ways, God's going to deal with you too. You are going down just like the person that never made a confession of faith. Sin sends one to hell. The Bible tells me that there's a gnashing of teeth. There's heat like never, ever we can ever imagine. Torment day and night without end. There's no central air units. There's no pool. There's no cold water. There's no soda. There's no lemonade. It's called hell for a reason. Because that's exactly what you're going to be going through. There's no key to let you out once you go there. Once you go there, you are there to stay and to never come out again. But if you fall in line, give your life to Christ. Come back if you backslid. Come back while you have a chance. Come back while you have an opportunity. And I want to serve notice to you, amen. You don't have to be away from the church or church services to be a bike fly. You can be in the midst of the congregation, hollering, amen, jumping and shouting, singing, praying, preaching, teaching, and still in a bike sledding state and on your way to hell. This is serious business we're talking about. Serious business. But it's time to line up with the word of God. He tells that then he will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Child of God, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, God can and will bring healing there. They're giving you trouble on the job, 
God will bring healing on the job. If they give you trouble in the school, God bring healing in the school on your behalf. Amen. If there's trouble in your marriage, wherever you are, that's your land. Whatever your feet tread upon, amen. That's your wherever you are, whatever you're going through, if you meet the conditions of God's word, like he put it out right here, God will heal your land. You want your marriage to get better? Get better with God. Get in God's word. Amen. You tired of robbing Peter and paying Paul? Do what the book of Malachi say, amen, and watch what God do. He said, prove me, no, try me if you pay your tithes and your offer. I'll open up the windows of heaven, pull you out of breath, that you won't have room enough to receive it all. It be pressed down, shaken together, heaped up, and running over, amen. I won't have enough, only have enough to take care of what I need to take care of, amen, and, and make life a little more comfortable for me, amen, but well, I have enough to help somebody else, amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's time to line up with the word of God. Time is winding up. Then, let's talk about then. Then, I'm going to get out. Then. Then is a word that implies immediately or soon afterwards. When you meet the condition, God can immediately bring about the promise he said, but shortly after it will come. Then, then, if, and then, then. If you meet the condition, then you receive the blessing. It's time to fall in line with God's word. God bless you. There is nothing to walk. For God, there is nothing too hard for God. He made this world out of nothing, scooped out the deep blue sea, and there is nothing you are for God. There is no sickness, 